Good morning once again. I, I wanted to kind of break the ice after that very difficult scripture reading, and I've been thinking about what to say, and, and, and really we don't have that much time left over because we've had a lot going on this morning, and what, what beautiful, do not miss the cantata tonight if you can. Be here and enjoy it with us. There's going to be cookies, and then there's going to be music. You get the cookies ahead of time. So it's a, it's a great deal tonight. So it's a, it's a good deal. Come and be a part of it. And the only thing else I could say that would kind of break that scary tone of the Scripture and our passage is, does anybody know if we can park on Dunlawton for the parade or not? <laughs> well, here's something. Happy New Year! Yes, we've started a new Happy Christian New Year. This is the point in our, we have a three-year cycle of readings known as the Revised Common Lectionary, and each year begins with the first Sunday of Advent and highlights one of the three synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. We're beginning in year B, so Mark will be the predominant Gospel reading throughout the year. Mark's Gospel stresses the deeds, the strength, and the determination of Jesus in overcoming evil forces. In Mark's time, that was particularly Rome's oppressive, violent role. In our day, throughout our world, it is on multiple fronts, and still including Israel. God's Word is just as important today. Our theme for this for this Advent season is let there be. That may sound strange, but, but that is the recurrent theme of this year's season. I see the theme as a call for you and me to participate in the ongoing revelation of God to God's people. Let's pray that that be the case for you and for me by God's grace. Let's pray. God, may we have this moment and this time to prepare ourselves, to prepare ourselves for the coming Christ and the coming kingdom, and not leave one without the other. Help us to hear your word today and your way as we share your message with one another in this place as your people ready to be awake. In Jesus we pray, amen. First thing I want to say is let there be us in God's plan. Amen? Amen? That's what we need. Our own doubts and fears often block our involvement in God's plan. It's too good to be true, or not for someone like me, which often leads us to be observers rather than participants. Then we talk about things like Advent as the, the coming kingdom of God, we only hear the historic realization, the first Christmas, if you will, not the ongoing advent of God's kingdom in our own lives. You see, we're afraid to step into God's plan. True? True. Yeah, it's, it's hard. It's a hard thing to do. And, and the truth is, if you read the Scriptures, we're not alone. It, it's in John's birth that when we hear the angel that told Zechari Zechariah his son would be one to prepare the way of the Lord. In Luke 1, we hear Zechariah say to the angel, how will I know that this is so? For I'm an old man and my wife is getting on in years. In other words, we're going to have this miraculous birth and I don't believe it. Zechariah doubted and was silenced and unable to share the good news until John's birth. In Luke, we hear another doubt for just a moment. Mary said to the angel, how can this be? But Mary accepted her call. We hear four verses later, then Mary said, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The advent began with Mary saying, let there be God's plan in my life. The advent began when she accepted the role and participated in God's plan for the kingdom. 
We are to engage in Advent more than remember it. Oh, we're good at that, aren't we? Remembering how it used to be and how it was. And boy, you know, if you go to church and your church doesn't do it exactly like they did it the year before, oh my goodness, right? Because we love that historic. But we're to be participating in Advent, not just remembering it. Mark Allen Powell, a New Testament professor at Luther Seminary, writes, the second coming should not simply be a doctrine to which we officially subscribe, like mentioning it in the creeds. It should be a defining reality that impacts our faith and lives. And that comes no more true than today as we begin in Advent. You know, we've had a tough year We're United Methodists. We've had a tough year. Yesterday was the final disaffiliation vote. We are now who we are. We are the United Methodist Church, and we begin a brand new era as people ready to move forward. That we don't look back and say, oh, how terrible it was. We look at the advent of what the United Methodist Church is going to do from this day forward. And that's, that's how Mark Allen Powell talks about it. That's what we have to think. We're a part of that. We need to participate in God's plan. How great are plans if nobody does anything? Not good. About today's passage, Mark Allen Powell writes, where he continues this way, this triumph of hope, furthermore, will be cataclysmic. The world as we know it projects pessimistic outcomes. Amen? Amen. But, but that world belongs to God, and it can be changed. And it will be changed, and changed so radically that people will someday speak of a time when heaven and earth, as it says in Mark 13, 30 through 1, heaven and earth will pass away. There is something better coming. Amen? Let there be hope. Let there be hope for Ukraine. Let there be hope for Israel, for Palestine, for, for the world. But it takes us to be participants. Hope takes our participation. Say that with me. Hope takes our participation. We are studying on Thursday night, no, Wednesday nights, Revelation. And, and are you ready for this? I really want you to listen closely because you aren't going to believe what I'm about to say. The book of Revelation is a book of hope. The book of Revelation is actually a book of hope. But what we've done is we've taken out the hope and replaced it with fear because a language like what we just heard up here, oh no, our knees are knocking together. That's not what it's meant to be. It, we've replaced it with fear. It paints, it definitely paints graphic, symbolic detail, the horrors of the world, but it doesn't leave us worrying about end times. It's a beautiful story reminding us that in the horrors of our days, and the horrors of our lives that God and uh, God has and will prevail. And there's always hope. There is always hope through the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? amen? There is hope in this world. We just have to participate in it. The book of Revelation is hopeful, saying that God is going to overcome no matter what we see in front of us. No matter what the scene looks like, no matter what it says, God is going to overcome that. The message of 1 Peter 1.3 is this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By His great mercy, He's given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Jesus rose from the dead. Amen? Oh, I'm doing a pastor thing, wasn't I, there for a moment? (laughs) Jesus rose from the dead. And from that moment on, do we understand hope? Yes, we get it. It's a living hope is what it says in the scripture. Did you hear that? Hope is alive. 
Hope is alive for every one of us in every situation. Revelation is not, here it comes, the end time is upon us. You hear all the time. It comes all the time. We have things going on. If it didn't happen yesterday, it's going to happen today. There are things that go wrong. But God is going to be in charge of that, and God's going to take care of it. There are wars and rumors of wars constantly. And the message is, the message of revelation and the message for us today and the message is, hold on. God is coming. Keep awake. Keep alert. Not just 2,000 years ago, but coming for you and me. Keep awake. Don't miss an inch of God's presence in our lives. That's what we should be doing right now, saying, this is a new day. The kingdom is coming and I want to be ready for it. I want to be awake so I don't miss any of it. It's glorious when God speaks, amen? It's glorious when God acts, amen? It's glorious when we think about God returning for us. That's glorious. There, let there be hope because the kingdom comes. Keep awake. It started in a tiny God child and it calls us to join. Keep awake. Hope is alive. In our hearts, let there be hope. It may not look like it, but what we don't see is where it is all at. And our work is to replace fear with our faith. Do you believe in God? Then there is hope. That's what we have to remember. Hebrews 11.1 one says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. If we can live into our hope, we will be changed and we will be the advent of others coming to Christ. Think about that. We get to be advent. When we, when we live out the life that Christ is meant for each and every one of us, when we sing so beautifully that the angels are in the room, People are changed, amen? So we can be part of the advent of others coming to Christ. Interestingly enough, Genesis 1-3, God said, let there be light. The very first words that God speaks in our scripture is, let there be, and there was light. God said, let there be, and there was. So God has not stopped saying that to us. We just have to keep listening, In this darkened world, God, we have our hope that that will be. Hebrews 10, 23 says, Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. So hold on to hope. No matter what you see, no matter what you feel, let there be hope. And there is. There is hope. The only thing that can keep us from our response is fear, is doubt. Don't let fear win. Say that with me. Don't let fear win. Ephesians 4, 4 says, There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope of your calling. So it's time to stop observing Yes, it's Advent season. Well, I, we won't get too rowdy during the, the cantata tonight, but we're going to participate. Time to stop observing and truly living into the hope of the great I Am. Haya, that's the, that's the, word, that's the uh, Hebrew word that means let there be. Let there be. It is the exact same Hebrew word as I Am. When God says in Exodus 3, When Moses says, if I come to the Israelites, what am I going to say to them? The God of your ancestors sent me to them. And they ask me, what is his name? What shall I tell them? You know, there's, there he is in Exodus. Moses, you know, he's always got his legs shaking and he's worried about things. And God says, I am who I am. Haya, haya. You get it? Let there be hope. Haya because the great I am is there. The great I am is with us. Let there be, and God's I am are the same. The world is addicted to fear. The world is saying and pleading, let there be hope. And there is hope in the great I am from the beginning. And we have it. 
We have that hope, but we have to share it. Oh, does this world need hope? Amen? We are called to share it. 1 Peter 3.15, But in your heart sanctified Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make a defense to anyone who demands from you an account of the hope that is in you. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. In you and me, there will be hope. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.